Modern man, impotent, feeble-minded, frightened of his own shadow. Today's men are far cry from the men of yesteryear. Robust men who erected this city with their own bare hands. What a strange sight they must have been, for it's hard to imagine today's men erecting much of anything. What went wrong here? And who's fit to blame? I'm Michael Michaels. Join me on my quest to uncover these secrets and explore an age in which men cherished work. Time stands still here in a great nation whose glory belongs to the past. During an era in which the industrialists saved modern men by bringing them from the darkness of the jungle into the light of the factory. But things are much different now. How did modern man repay the industrialists? With laziness, slothfulness, and deceit, forcing the industrialists to take the factories and move them beyond the shores of this great nation. The past casts a long shadow on the present and that shadow is only growing darker. This factory employed thousands of men, men who treasured their jobs more than anything. It wasn't easy work, but a job at the Belford Ball Crushing Factory meant a steady paycheck, respectful offspring, and a loyal, obedient wife. Imagine! 10,000 men packed into this very corridor, each of them desperate to have their balls crushed. This factory was 600,000 square feet across 10 different buildings, each filled wall to wall with ball crushing machinery. The sheer volume of balls crushed in this space was world historic, and the competition for jobs was fierce. Every morning at 4 a.m., the men lined up at this very door. The debriefer, the most coveted position at the time, would remove the men's trousers in order to physically, as well as visually, inspect each man's testicles, ensuring they were of Belford quality. When the starting bell rang, the machines roared to life. Pistons clanged and steam bellowed. The men howled and hanged, but never fought them. That was the prestige of being a Belford boy. But things are much different now. Here at the adjacent rail yard, boxcars full of crushed balls used to make their way to port. But now there's nary a crushed ball in sight. It's not due to lack of demand. They are more popular than ever. It's because today's men refuse to work. Entrepreneurship used to thrive in this city, even at an intersection such as this. Intrepid men used creative methods to earn a living on these streets, for they too weren't afraid of hard work. Such men were known as bags, short for socking bags, who, as their name implied, would take a beating for a negotiated rate. Back in those days, there's ample demand to throw a kick or a right hook into some warm flesh. Psychologists lauded the bag as a societal pressure valve, for the mayor had recently made wife hitting illegal. Imagine, you've worked hard all week, but now it's time for a little fun with the mates. You hand the bag the money, and the clock begins. Start with a punch, brand him with the cigarette, or maybe a wallop in the testicles. <sighs> Things are much different now. Such enterprising spirit is a rare sight these days. For today's men would prefer handouts to an honest day's work. Lost is not just commerce, but gone are the foundational experiences of our lives.
Nothing celebrated this city's spirit of hard work like the annual winter swimming contest. The mayor would pin a fiver to a buoy several miles offshore, and thousands of men would plunge into the waters to retrieve the money and be the first to return it to this pier. Swimming was a rare talent back in those days. For most who took the plunge, never made it back to land. And it wasn't just a competition of brawn and grit. It was imperative to outwit your fellow competitor. Switchblades, small, easy to conceal. These would quickly stop the competition in their tracks. Some men strategically opted to heave rocks from the shore pummeling the leader with a few hefty stones and snatching their rightful prize. When the winner emerged from the water, the crowd roared with delight. The mayor would then crown him the Winter Swim King and assign him the dutiful queen. But later generations had little interest in this tradition, and the number of participants dwindled until there were none at all. There was even political pressure from the Democratic Party to raise the prize money from $5 to 10 But the Chamber of Commerce rightfully revolted, and the city comptroller proclaimed the idea as fiscally unsound. The past is much different, much different than it is now. Today's men scoff at tradition. Indeed, they are lost, detached from their roots heedless to the lessons from their ancestors who rest at the bottom of this very lake. Here, listen closely to the waves, they carry their cries from the deep, begging that these echoes from the past are not forgotten. These lessons from the past are just a slight whisper, and they speak only to those who are willing to listen.